Special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Rusberg for making this video possible. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, Scare Tool for here bringing you in our Minecraft Modern Warfare aircraft tutorial. And this tutorial will be going ahead and building the F-16I Sofa. The F-16I is a two-seam variant of the Block 52 developed for the Israeli Defense Force Air Force. The Block 52 is a kind of European version of the F-16, uh, an exported version, I have to say. Um, a lot of the uh, Block 52 fighters have those kind of external fuel tanks mounted on the fuselage, so it kind of has a, gives them a little bit of a wider um, look and a little bit more of a chonkier um, design. So that's kind of where the uh, Block 52, I guess, the way to tell that variant apart. And the sofa here is basically a development of it. Now, in 1997, Israel issued a requirement um, and selected the F-16 in preference to the F-15I in July of 1999. An initial Peace Marble V contract was signed on January 14, 2000, and a follow-on contract signed on the 19th of December 2001 for a total procurement of 102 aircraft. The F-16I, which is called the Sofa, or Storm, by the IDF slash AF, first flew on... December 23rd, 2003, and deliveries to the Israeli Defense Force Air Force began on February 19th, 2004. The F-16 has an estimated unit cost of approximately 70 million USD. Uh, one major deviation of the F-16I from the Block 52 is that approximately 50% of the avionics were replaced, in is replaced by Israeli-developed avionics, such as the Israeli Aerial Toad Decoy replacing the AL. E-50, an anonymous aerial combat maneuvering instrumentation, which enables train exercise to be conducted without the dependence on ground instrumentation. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the main uh, differences there for the sofa. It does have a little differences as well, uh, with it being mainly a two-person um, cockpit, which is something that's not too common on F-16s, and it also has a bit of a taller spine compared to that of... Um, some of the other variants of the F-16. So it's a really cool fighter and should make a really awesome addition to your worlds if you're looking for a nice kind of Israeli fighter jet. Um, this year is going to be a really nice design for it. Before we go ahead and jump into the build though, I do want to go ahead and give special thanks to Patreon supporter Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. If you guys are interested in supporting the channel more than you already do, feel free to check my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions where you can go and pledge a small amount to the channel every month and in doing so earn a favor for a quarter request that you're choosing. It really helps support the work I do on my channel. It's really, really appreciated, so definitely feel free to check that out. Again, links for all that will always be in my video descriptions. With that, though, let's go ahead and dive in here to take a look at the F-16i sofa. So going ahead and diving into it, we have the aircraft here. It's got a uh, color scheme here, obviously going with a nice gray um, underbelly. Realistically, this would be a little bit lighter, but we kind of are limited on what we have in block terms of usage. So we have basically this kind of gray um, underbelly here. And then the camouflage here is a mix of white, uh, tan, and brown, which create a really cool uh, color scheme here and is the one that's using the, the most prevalent uh, type of color scheme on the F-16 eyes. Um, up from here, we have the uh, dual cockpit. So again, room for uh, two um, basically aviators. And then we have the um, kind of expanded sides here, which have those uh, extra fuel storage capabilities, and then we also have our spine of the aircraft, which is a little bit taller compared to that of other F-16 variants. On the wings, uh, pretty straightforward, um, really the same wings that we've done before on our F-16 models, except this here has uh, a fuel tank, uh, external, some bombs, and some missiles, so quite a lot of, um, you know, variety in payload. And then on the back here, again, nothing too crazy here, just the single um, jet engine that is uh, typical, for, typical for all of 16. So really cool design for it. Obviously, we do have a landed version here in front of us. There will also be a in-flight version here included as well, so you'll be able to pick and choose and build both of them if you want. Um, anyways, though, that's going to kind of do it for the overview here for the F-16i Sufa, and with that, let's go ahead and jump into our tutorial. All right, guys, so going ahead and moving into our first layer here, we're going to be going ahead and starting off with layer number three. Now, we're starting off with layer three because we get a better kind of basis of the aircraft built, and it's easier to kind of go ahead and add layers one and two onto the aircraft from layer three with layer three built. Um, a few quick things I do want to go ahead and mention for this tutorial is if you're completely new to my aircraft tutorials, the way I like to structure these tutorials is I like to do half on camera, half off. What this means is I'm going to be building the entire center line of the aircraft and they'll be building the right side. It'll be up to you guys to take the right side and copy it over to the left side. The aircraft is symmetrical, so whatever we do on one side will be done to the other. So just keep that in mind as we go through this tutorial. 
Um, in addition, if uh, you're planning on building the landed version of the aircraft, you do want to make sure that layer three here sits four blocks up from the ground level. We have one, two, three, and on this fourth layer right here from the ground level is where our layer three is going to start. So make sure you take that into account before you go ahead and get started as you want to have your aircraft positioned properly before you go ahead and start um, building it if you want to build the land version. If you're building this in flight, obviously you don't have to worry about that. That is pretty much, um, you're pretty much good to go. Now, one thing I'm going to go ahead and also mention, one last thing, is that if you are planning on doing the air, uh, building the aircraft in the Israeli uh, color scheme, so the tan, brown, and white, we will be building the aircraft completely in a solid sandstone uh, design, so just that tan color. And we'll be going ahead and talking about the camo scheme a little bit later at the end of the video. So just note when we get to those sections that do have the sandstone, and I'll talk about this a little bit later once I get to that point, there is going to be only sandstone or we won't be using any of the other color palette uh, for the camouflage until we go ahead and move into our camouflage section in which we talk about a little bit further. Anyway, so let's get started. Now, um, to get started with here, we're going to go ahead and again, we have three blocks up from our um, bottom or from the ground if you are building this landed. If in flight, obviously it doesn't really matter too much, but we're going to go ahead and start off with two stone blocks. Now going forward from those stone blocks, we're going to place down two pistons upside down. If you are on Java, we're going to place the pistons. If you're not on Java, we're going to place down two stone top slabs in its place of those pistons. After that, we're going to place down another stone top slab here and then an iron trap door like that to go ahead and make our uh, front there. Going ahead and going back from these two stone blocks, you're going to place down one, two, and three pistons. Again, those can be substituted out for stone top slabs instead. After those uh, pistons, we're going to take our stone blocks. You're going to place down a row of stone full blocks going down the center of the aircraft for a total of 19, which will then be followed up with a block of another right here on the end, a deep slate tile uh, upside down stair, and a deep slate tile top slab on the very end like that. Coming off the side here of the deep slate, or the uh, netherite, Block to the right, we're going to place it on a polished black stone upside down stair, and we're just going to go on the side of it. After we have that all done, we want to take our stone full blocks, so we're going to go ahead and go forward 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 stone blocks forward. I'm going to go ahead and just double check my count here, and it is going to be 15 in total. We then want to go ahead and take our anisite walls, we're going to place down 1, 2, and then after those two anisite walls, uh, we're going to swap over to our stone stairs, we're going to place down 1 and 2 stone upside down stairs. Followed by one, two, three stone top slabs. And we're going to then place down one and two uh, stone up sound stairs like so. We're going to then take our skeleton skulls and we're going to place down two like that going forward. After we have that all done, we want to go ahead and then grab ourselves an iron trap door. We're going to place it coming off the side of this stone top slab here. So it's going to be that middle one in that row of three. And we're going to then go back from it one, two, three iron trap doors. We'll follow this on with stone top slabs. And we're going to go back 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 stone top slabs. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8 iron trap doors. After those 8 iron trap doors, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4 here. And then one more toward the back. Then we're going to place down a row of 1, 2, 3, 4. Then a row of 3 of stone top slabs. 1, 2, 3. And then 1, 2 stone top slabs like that to the very end there. And we're just going to take chains and place them from up these 2 stone top slabs just like that. Now once that's done, that's pretty much our horizontal stabilizer is complete for this layer and we're going to go ahead and then move into our uh, wings here. Now we're going to come off this first stone top slab here, we're going to place down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 iron trap doors across there. We also want to go ahead and grab ourselves a stone um, slab and we're going to go to the third iron trap door and we're going to place down a stone slab that is going to come off this um, come off this iron trap door so it's going to sit like that there so again it's that third iron trap door from the front there we'll place an iron trap door here on the front and we're going to place down a stone stair here behind that we're going to take our iron trap or inside walls we're going to place down one two three and four walls going back after that we're going to take an iron trap door place it right here and then we're going to go one two three four five and six iron trap doors back as well as two iron trap doors on top of those Anset, or going off those anisite walls. Now, once we have that done there, uh, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron trap door coming off the second one here, and we're going to go ahead and go back a total of five more. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and actually six. So it's going to be like that, six in total there. Um, then, once we have that done, we're going to place down an iron trap door here. Then we're going to place down three anisite walls forward, and then a stone slab uh, like so. After that, we're going to take our iron trap doors again. We're going to place down one, two, three, four. 
And then we're going to take our inside walls, one, two, three. And then one, two, iron trap doors, like that. Now, after we have that all complete there, we're going to go ahead and build our first little missile here that's going to be on the side. We're going to need an end rod, a quartz slab fence gate, as well as an item frame. And we're also going to need a uh, black concrete block, a birchwood sign, and then a wither skeleton, or a wither skeleton skull and a dark oak fence gate. For this missile here, it's pretty simple. We're going to go off this quartz uh, top slab here and place down a, or this uh, iron trap door. We're going to place down a quartz top slab, kind of at an angle going back. We're going to place down a virtual fence gate on both sides of this top slab, as well as an item frame on the side here facing toward the back of the aircraft with a black concrete block and birchwood sign if you're on Java. Uh, just a side note here is that Java play, or Java is the only version that allows you to place down item frames and um, signs in the same block space. So if you're not on Java, you will not be able to do this feature here. We then want to take our iron trap doors. We're going to go ahead and go one, two, iron trap doors forward, a dark oak fence gate, and a wither skeleton skull like that to go ahead and make our missile there. So pretty simple stuff. That's it for that missile, and that's pretty much it for this layer. Take a look at it from the top-down view. So we should have layer three all complete. And with that, we're probably going to go ahead and drop down two layers one and two and get the bottom of the aircraft situated. All right, guys, so we're going ahead and move it into our next layers. We have layers one and two. For these layers here, we're going to go ahead and start off by going ahead and going to the bottom of the aircraft. We're going to go ahead and go to that second stone block right here that we placed in the previous layer, and we're just going to place down a lever and have that flicked forward like so. Pretty simple and straightforward. We then want to go ahead and go back to our uh, stone full block, so right after this row of three of pistons or slabs, and we're going to place down an end rod that comes down from it. We're going to then place down a black concrete block, and after that black concrete block, we're going to place down a long row of stones. It's going to be one, two, three, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight um, in total here. So let me go ahead and just double check our count here just to make sure, uh, but it should be eight stone full blocks. Then we're going to place down a row of four of upside down pistons. If you are, again, not a Java player, um, instead of the pistons here, I would recommend two stone full blocks and then two stone top slabs as an alternative. Then after those uh, blocks there, we're going to place down one, two, three, four stone top slabs and the iron trap door to go ahead and include that for the center line. Now, after that's done from the center line, we're going to go out to the size of the second to last like gray stainless pane or stone slab on the back here. We're going to place down a light gray stainless pane. Then we're going to place down two and the side walls forward, and then another light gray stainless pane here. And then on the bottom of that uh, and the side wall here, we're going to place down a stone top slab. Um, going ahead and going to the sides of the pistons, we're going to take our stone top slabs. We're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we want to place down one, two, three, um, and the side up down stairs. And then take our stone blocks. We're going to go ahead and go one, two stone blocks forward, a black concrete block, and then a stone stair, like that. Uh, once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and also place down a tripwire hook on this stone block here. And on the side of this black concrete block, you can place down an iron trap door if you're on Java. And we're going to go ahead and then type in the command slash give space app p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. So this command here, press and enter, it will give you this glowing stick. We can left click this iron trap door till we get selected open false. We'll right click this, set that to true, and it'll lay flat against the side of that black concrete. We're going to go ahead and also place down an iron trap door on the bottom of the black concrete here. And one more back on the bottom of that stone block to go ahead and create the bottom there of that intake. With uh, that all done there, we're also going to go ahead and go to these uh, pistons right on the back here, and we will take our debug stick here, and we're going to left click these until we get selected extended false prompt, and we're going to go ahead and right click these and get rid of that wood portion like so to go ahead and complete those, um, those pistons, and that's designed there and it kind of helps shape the underbelly here of the aircraft. Now once that's all done, uh, we're going to go ahead and start moving into kind of our uh, loadouts, I guess you can say here, for the aircraft itself. Now, the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to go ahead and place down a stone full block on the bottom of this iron trap door. We're going to place down one more block forward and then a skeleton skull. After that is all done, we're going to take our stone blocks. We're going to go back from this one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight uh, stone full blocks back like so. Or rather, actually, it is going to be a stone or row seven and then a uh, smooth stone block here in the back. So right after that iron trap door there. Now on the back of this, we're going to go ahead and also place down a ladder. Now underneath here, we're going to take our iron trap doors. We're going to place down one, two, and then our stone top slabs. One, two, three, four, five, six stone top slabs forward, and then their iron trap door like that. Uh, once we have that done, uh, we're going to go ahead and grab our iron trap doors, and on both sides of this stone block, we're going to go ahead and place down an iron trap door, and then we're going to use our debug stick here to right-click this 
open to true and it should lay flat against the sides. This is a little side note, I don't think I mentioned it right there, but you can also use Birchwood Trapdoors as an alternative if you are on a version other than Java that does not have the ability to place down or use actually your debug stick in this matter. If that's the case, again, you can use Birchwood Trapdoors as a good alternative that will work in this case. Then for this section here, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six. Like recently, was paint back, and same thing will be done over here on this side. So again, just six glass panes going back. After that's done, we'll also place down a stone slab to both sides here of the stone full blocks. And we're going to place that on an iron trapdoor also on the sides of that spoof stone block using our iron trapdoors. And our debug stick will go in and create um, the sides there of it like that. And that's going to create your, um, your tanks there. Now, once that's done, uh, we're going to go ahead and start working on kind of our missiles and our loadout here. So for our next missile, or bomb I should say, we're going to use our, some dark prismarine, some zombie heads, some dark oakwood signs, and some dark oakwood fence gates. So that's going to kind of be our go-to for this layer. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go, ahead and go to the back wall here. We're going to place on a dark prismarine top slab. And we're going to go forward, one, two, three, four, forward, and then a zombie head on both ends, like so. Once we have that done, uh, we want to go ahead and then place down a dark oak fence gate on both sides of the last slab, and then we're going to have the fence gate opened up toward the slab. We're also going to take dark oak signs and all the way along the side here of the dark oak, or all the way along the side of the dark prismarine, we're going to go ahead and place down dark oak signs. So all the way along the side, like that. And that's pretty much all you need to do for that one. Then our next. Uh, or kind of loadout here is going to be a um, missile. So you're going to need some birch wood, uh, fence gates, some smooth sandstone, or some quartz slabs, a skeleton skull, a repeater, and that should be about it. So for this real simple, we're going to place down a quartz top slab back here, a skeleton skull going back, birch wood fence gates on both sides of this slab here. We're going to go ahead and then place down two more fence gates forward, a narrow quartz top slab, another fence gate and another skeleton skull like that going forward for that missile. We're going to go and then take a trip or, or a uh, redstone repeater and we're going to place it down on top of this quartz top slab, separate the notches and we're also going to place down a birch wood fence gate on both sides of this quartz top slab which will result you having to remove this one dark oak wood sign. Not that big of a deal, just go ahead and remove it and we'll place down a fen fence gate there and open it up toward that uh, quartz top slab like so. And once you have that all done, that's pretty much it for our missiles. Um, you have your loadout on the aircraft and good to go. And uh, really that is it for layers one and two. I'm just going to go ahead and fly it around real quick, make sure I'm not missing any little small details. But uh, everything does seem to be good to go. So I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, this layer complete. Anyways, though, that is it for layer number one and two. And with that, let's move on up to layer number four. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number four. For layer four, to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to place down a daily detector on top of this iron trap door here in the front, and we're going to go ahead and change it to the night mode, so that bluish gray color. Coming off this um, uh, daily detector, we're also going to place down an end rod going forward. We're going to go ahead and go back from the daily detector with a stone slab, a piston. If you are not on Java, I would recommend a stone stair in this position instead. And then after that piston, we're going to place down a stone full block. We're going to go and then take our smooth sandstone and just a reminder that we will be going ahead and doing the whole kind of upper section here of the aircraft in a stone stand a smooth sandstone configuration and then talk about the camouflage a little bit later so anytime i do mention sandstone i am referring to the smooth sandstone so do make sure you're using that over the no normal stuff we're going to place down a long row this smooth sandstone all the way down the center here um, this here is going to be a total of 23 blocks in length we're going to go ahead and place down a black concrete block, or if you do want to have the engine turned on, you can place on a glowstone and then an orange stained glass block. Either one will work. I'm just going to go ahead and keep the engine turned off, so I'm going to use black concrete, but again, you can use glowstone instead of the black concrete, and then in this space, place down like an orange stained glass block and have a uh, engine that looks like it's on. We're going to go ahead and place down a block another right right here, followed by a deep slate tile wall, and then a gray stained glass paint coming off that like so. We're going to go then go forward to the front of the vehicle or the aircraft with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Um, smooth sandstone blocks, a birchwood trapdoor on the side there, and then an andesite wall in that section followed by a skeleton school on the side of this piston. We can then take our debug stick here and we can actually right click that piston um, to go ahead and get rid of that wood portion. And same thing here can be done for the bottom front pistons as well for our shaping there. Um, after we get that all finished, we're going to go ahead and then place down a birchwood trapdoor here. And then behind that, we're going to place down two 
daylight detectors like so. Right here you may run into the issue where your iron trapdoor is open because of the daylight detectors. A um, couple solutions here can be either use the debug stick and manually close those trapdoors, or you can go ahead and replace the iron trapdoors on the bottom here of virtual trapdoors, or just go ahead and keep these at a light bluish color. Um, either those are going to be your pretty sure options when it comes to the pistons there, or rather the iron trapdoors and the daylight detectors. We're going to go ahead and place down two anisette walls like so. Followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Um, smooth sandstone blocks pack, an end portal frame, and then a smooth sandstone slab, followed by a daily detector. Now, after that is done there, we're going to go ahead and then take our uh, daily detector. We're going to place it on the, that top iron trapdoor there, and then two smooth sandstone slabs, and then two more daily detectors. Uh, we're going to go ahead and continue on with our uh, virtual trapdoors of a row of four across the side here, then a row of two, and we then want to go ahead and very simply just place down virtual pressure plates in that corner there. And we also want to make sure that those iron trap doors can't get fixed. You can, use this, you can use the same methods as we did up there in the front to go ahead and adjust those. Now after we get to this point, we're going to go ahead and then place down a daylight detector here, followed by a second one, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, or rather, sorry, just five stone smooth sandstone slabs a daylight detector and two birch with trapdoors going back. Next one here is going to be a daylight detector. It's going to be followed by one, two, three, four sandstone slabs, narrow daylight detector, and then two more birch with trapdoors. Once you have that done, we're going to place down a narrow daylight detector, two smooth sandstone slabs, two more daylight detectors, and two birch with trapdoors. We're going to go then place down two more daylight detectors here. And this is going to be followed with three more, so a total of five. And again, a virtual trapdoor here on the back here. Do make sure that during this time period, you are going to go ahead and correct your iron trapdoors opening. Again, this can be using the many methods I talked about before. Um, but just make sure that you do replace or do fix the iron trapdoors as you kind of go along so that none of them are left, um, you know, open or anything like that. Um, anyways, though, after th that's done there, we're going to go and take our daylight detectors, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of four here, and then a virtual trapdoor on the end. We're going to go ahead and then place down a row of three, so one, two, three, birchwood trapdoor here. Again, we'll keep up with those iron trapdoors and make sure we re, um, reset them. Then we're going to place down two more daylight detectors, and a birchwood trapdoor like that, closed. And we then want to go ahead and place down a singular, uh, singular um, dough detector and then a virtual trapdoor to go ahead and finish it off again make sure your iron trapdoor stays closed and all that fun stuff anyway so that right there is going to pretty much wrap up everything we have there for uh layer number four taking a look at it from up above is what it should look like for the top down view and um with that all done and finished off that's going to complete layer four let's move on up to layer number five moving into our next layer we have layer number five for layer five to get started with here we're going to begin with by going and placing down a virtual trapdoor here on top of this first smooth sandstone block we're going to go ahead and place down a daylight detector and behind that daylight detector we're going to place down a row of black stained glass full blocks for a total of five after those five blocks we're going to place down two black concrete blocks and then we're going to continue on for smooth sandstone down the center line here for a total of 15 blocks we're going to go ahead and place down a block of nether right here, a polished deep slate tile stair, and a slab coming off of it. We're also going to place down a polished blackstone stair on both sides of that nether right, as well as a wither skeleton skull on both sides of that uh, polished deep slate um, tile stair. Um, after that's done, going ahead and going after the stair here, we're going to take our smooth sandstone stairs. We're going to build one, two, three, four, five stairs forward, and then switch it back to our smooth sandstone. We're going to build one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve smooth sandstone uh, full blocks forward, and then three smooth sandstone slabs, followed by a, another brick wall, and then there, or sorry, and then a uh, black stained glass pane, a birchwood trap door, and then a stone button on top of that um, block like that. After we have that done, we want to go ahead and then place down an item frame here on the middle um, slab. And we're going to place down a red concrete block rotated so it kind of forms a diamond in the item frame. If you're on Java, we'll also place down a birchwood sign on the side there of that slab as well. We're also going to place down a birchwood sign on the side of this slab going toward the rear of the aircraft. We're going to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull here at a slight angle. So not exactly a 45, but just a nice kind of slight angle like that going back. Then we're going to place down two end portal frames, which are going to have... On the first one, a item frame, 
and then a red concrete block rotated again at an angle like we did for the front there. If you're on Java, again, a birch wood sign over the item frame, and then for all versions, a birch wood sign on the side of the second end portal frame. Uh, we're going to take our smooth sandstone blocks, we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five, six blocks, then one, two portal frames, a sandstone slab, a daylight detector, and then a birchwood trapdoor closed like that going back to go ahead and start forming our those uh, fuel tanks there on the sides and that right there is pretty much almost it for this layer uh, one last thing is going to be the addition of an item frame right after this block here with an iron bar in the item frame like that and we'll also place down birchwood signs on the side of the end portal frames just to kind of keep the colors a little bit more consistent from the side view um, anyways though, with that all out of the way, that is going to complete everything we have there for this layer here for the F16i. And we'll go ahead and continue on up to our next layer, which will be layer number 6. Moving into our next layer, we have layer number 6. For layer 6 to get started with here, we're going to place down an Arabic slab on top of that second black stained glass block. And then behind that, we're going to go ahead and go back with five black stained glass full blocks back from the Arabic slab. On the side of the five black stained glass full blocks, we're going to place down like gray stained glass panes, or sorry, black stained glass panes along the sides. Then on the back here, we're going to go ahead and place down one, two, three, four, five, six of these end portal frames. After those end portal frames, we're going to go ahead and place down a row of smooth um, sandstone going back for a total of 10. And at the very back here, we're going to place down a smooth sandstone top slab, an item frame, which is going to have a light gray bed in the item frame, and then a birch wood sign over it again for Java players. On the side of this slab here, we're going to place down a sign, and as well as a sign on the side of that first smooth sandstone block. We then want to place down one, two, three of these trap doors, close them like such. A skeleton skull here, a skeleton skull coming off this skull like that, so it kind of looks like that there on both sides. Then right after those end portal frames, on these first two smooth sandstone blocks, we're going to place down two item frames and then two iron bars in those item frames. We will also take our birchwood signs and along the side here of the six uh, end portal frames, we're going to go ahead and place down six birchwood signs all the way along the side there. And that will be the same on both sides. And with that all done there, that is going to pretty much wrap that up. And I believe that actually right there finishes um, this layer. So yeah, that right there is going to complete everything for layer 7. At this point in time, we we're pretty much just going to be going ahead and moving into our final layers and get the rest of the build built. So with that, let's go ahead and move into our last final layers. Alright guys, so moving into our final layers here, we have layers 7 through 11. For these layers to go ahead and get started with here, we're going to go ahead and begin with going to go to the, go into the cockpit here. We're going to place down a dark oak slab on the, the second uh, black stained glass block there. And then we're going to go ahead and then place down a daylight detector, which will turn to the night mode, and then there a dark oak trap door on the back there to go ahead and finish off your glass um, canopy. Now with that all done, going ahead and moving back to our tail section here, we're going to go ahead and go to the third um, smooth sandstone block. We're going to place down an iron frame on top here, which you can have a light gray stained glass pane in the center there of it. So it's going to be just like that. Behind that, we're going to place down a lever. We're going to go ahead and then skip two spaces. We're going to place down a red concrete block, then two smooth sandstone blocks, and then a, um, or sorry, three smooth sandstone blocks. And then on the very end here, we're going to go ahead and place down a yellow glass pane here on the back. We're going to go ahead and place down a red concrete block on top of this smooth sandstone block here, two smooth sandstone blocks back, and then a sandstone wall with a chain coming off it toward the rear. Then going up again, we're going to place down a, uh, another smooth sandstone block on top of the smooth sandstone block here, end rod facing forward, and then two smooth sandstone blocks back from that full block, as well as a chain on the end. Going up on the last two smooth sandstone blocks, we're going to place down two smooth quartz blocks, as well as a white stainless paint on the back. And on the very top here, we're going to place down a red stone up here that's going to have the notches faced forward, like so. After that's done, we do have this banner design also, which is something you can place on both sides of the aircraft. There are quite a few tutorials out there that do cover the um, structure of this banner, so I'm not going to go ahead and cover it in this tutorial. Uh, but basically, it's just a white banner with the blue kind of Star of David, uh, which is a symbol that the Israelis like to put onto their... Um, aircraft. Uh, but anyways, that right there is basically it for layers 7 through 11. And with that, that's going to wrap up my uh, kind of tutorial for the in-flight version here. Um, at this point in time, I would like to direct your attention here to the video um, encoder bar or the the uh, time bar. You can go ahead and use that to scroll ahead to whatever section or chapter of the video you are wanting to go ahead and do next. Uh, we will be covering the landing gear next. And then after that, that is done, we will be going ahead and talking about the camouflage. So if you are wanting to build a landing gear, then go ahead and stick around. We're going to be going ahead and adding that on. If you are wanting to just build a camouflage, then you can go ahead and skip to head to that part. All depends on what you're kind of trying to get from this tutorial. So definitely um, use it to your full advantage and go ahead and skip ahead to wherever you need to go. Anyways, though, with that, let's go ahead and move into the landing gear. 
Alright guys, so go ahead and move into our landing gear. We're going to go ahead and start with our front wheel. For our front wheel here to go ahead and get started with, we're going to go ahead and begin by going ahead and breaking these two iron trap doors here. So this one and this one underneath that um, intake. In this place, we're going to go ahead and place down a stone brick up down stair here. And we're going to go ahead and go down from the stone brick up down stair for a black or a block of coal. We're going to place our lever on the block of the coal with um, the lever facing toward the stone brick stair. And then on both sides of this block of coal, we're going to have a light gray banner that's going to have a black border and a black horizontal line for the center. Really simple banner. And it's going to go on both sides of the block of coal, just like that for the wheel. After that's done, we want to go ahead and then delete this iron trap door. And we're going to place down one and two and a set of walls on the bottom there for that uh, door that would open up for the landing gear. And that's it for the front wheel. Really simple. Let's move on to the back ones. Moving into our next uh, section of landing gear, we have the rear wheels. For this, we're going to be going ahead and start off by going ahead and going to our third stone stair right here. We're going to delete this stair, this top slab, and this top slab here. In its place, we're going to place down a birchwood fence post on both ends there, and then an iron trap door there in the center. We're also going to go ahead and place down a row of three of upside down uh, stone stairs like that for the doors that would open up. Now, once we have that done, we're going to go ahead and go down from this fence post and out to the side there, like that. And we also want to go ahead and place down a skeleton skull, like this. And one like this coming off of it. So it's going to kind of form this part or portion here. And then going down for this birch wood fence post, we're going to place down another block of coal that's going to go down at an angle here. A lever on the side here of the block of coal facing toward that, um, or facing up toward the fence post. And then we're also going to place down a light gray banner on the side of that block of coal, just like that. And after we have that all done there, you're going to take that same design and copy it over to the gear side. And once you have that all complete there, that's going to wrap up, up the landing gear here for the F-16i. At this point in time, that is it for the landing gear. And hopefully you guys are able to get that no problem. We'll be moving into the final segment of this tutorial, which will be the camouflage. All right, guys. So when it comes to the camouflage of the aircraft, it really isn't anything too uh, extreme. Uh, basically, we have three colors we have mixed into the aircraft. We have uh, a good ratio of tan and brown. Uh, tan is obviously our sandstone, where we built the aircraft entirely out of um, for this air section of the aircraft that will be camouflaged. But then we also have the darker brown, which is, or I'd say darker brown, but it's kind of a light brown. It's the use of spruce, so we're using the stripped spruce wood uh, logs or blocks, and then we're using the spruce slabs, trap doors, pressure plates, uh, signs, whatever we would need to do to kind of replace it. And then we have sol small segments where we actually have white, and those are done with smooth cores using diorite, white stained glass panes, um, skeleton skulls, birchwood signs if needed, and so on and so forth. It's pretty simple. Um, there really isn't too much to kind of cover here in terms of I'm just going to kind of show you guys what I did. But the best thing to really do is look at real life camo schemes and kind of lay it out for yourself. Um, but hopefully this kind of overview here just kind of gives you an idea of the blocks I used and how I placed them. Um, also, in addition, I would recommend highly to go ahead and find pictures and references of real life F-16Is and try to replicate the camouflage that they used on those um, into the build to kind of create your own um, little design there and all that stuff. One thing to keep in note is that my aircraft model is symmetrical. So the camouflage is the same on both sides. Realistically, this would not be the case and you would only have, you would have a very different pattern on both sides. So just make sure you keep that into account as well. Um, to definitely add some variety to your build and make sure that both sides um, are not just a reflection of each other. But that right there is pretty much it for my tutorial here and really just the camo uh, for the F-16i and um, overall the tutorial for the F-16i. Hope you guys do enjoy this tutorial and are able to put it to good use. If you do amuse this build, I do ask that you guys give me proper credit for it. This has been linked from the side of the build, tweet to my channel, or this video if this does your pretty social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, your freezer for a project you guys are working on overall enjoy the build, have fun for all that fun stuff. Again, a special thanks to Patreon support Derek Frost Westbrook for making this tutorial possible. And as always, feel free to check out my Patreon page. Link is always in my video descriptions. With that though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, to like comment, and subscribe. This will be your 204, and I'll see you guys next time.